Oh, hey, a new phone from Alcatel. That's pretty awesome. Oh, that looks nice, huh? Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> it must be on the back. What the f Alcatel has carved a niche for itself in the mid-range smartphone market. Sure, its parent company TCL is responsible for the BlackBerry Key 1, and in the future may be bringing us more Palm phones, but the Alcatel Idol line is a dependable standby if you want a nice phone that won't break the bank. The Alcatel Idol 5 is just such a device. We have been using the Idol 5 on the Cricket Network for about a week now, and we're ready to share our thoughts. In its Idol line of phones, Alcatel has kept a consistent look and feel to the hardware. It looks like a glass slab mounted on top of an aluminum chassis. The plastic backing is typical of mid-range phones, but from the front, this is a very pretty design. The design is also symmetrical, which is reminiscent of one of the Idol's old tricks. You used to be able to use it either right side up or upside down. That isn't the case now, which is a little sad, but realistically probably didn't have much of a use case. Around the sides of the phone, you'll find a power button on the left and a volume rocker on the right. Also on the right is the now key or the boom key. Its name seemingly depends on where in the software you happen to be. The boom key is similar to BlackBerry's convenience key, but with much better execution. You can configure the boom key to open several apps or access several functions on the phone. You can use it to launch Clash Royale or launch Google Assistant. The advantage over the convenience key is that you can configure several apps or several functions to the key, but not unfortunately both. You cannot configure it to launch a geocaching app or turn on a flashlight. Functions and apps are separate for some reason. But still, this button is really nice. On the bottom, you'll find a USB charging port capable of utilizing MediaTek's Pump Express charging. Yes, MediaTek seriously calls it Pump Express. There's also a headphone jack. The top and bottom of the phone sport dual front-facing speakers. Speaking of the front-facing speakers, call quality on the Idol 5 is just fine. People still talk on phones, right? Callers reported that we came through loud and clear. On our end, the speakers weren't as loud as some phones we've used in the past, but we were still able to hear our callers without much difficulty. Both the camera on the front and the camera on the back include a flash. On the inside, we have a MediaTek OctaCore 2.35 GHz Helio P20 processor, 2 GB of RAM, 32 GB of storage, expandable up to 256 GB. The front camera is an 8 megapixel sensor with a 12 megapixel shooter on the back. The screen is a 5.2 inch full HD panel. All of this is powered by a 2850 milliamp hour battery. What you won't find anywhere on the phone is a fingerprint sensor. It's 2017 and companies are still making phones with no fingerprint sensor. Since we're in the era of the iPhone X, we should clarify that there is no biometric unlock mechanism at all. This is, simply put, unacceptable in this day and age. We're going to let you think about that for a second or two before we move on. On the software side, the phone is running a mostly stock Android 7.0. The home screen grid and icons are highly customizable. You can adjust the grid size, icon size, and the size of the text labels. The grid can go anywhere from a 3x3 up to 5x6, plus you can adjust the size of the icons and the text, allowing you a ton of freedom when it comes to the look of your home screen. The home screen is also customizable with themes that you can download. The garbage can icon in the app launcher makes it super easy to uninstall apps from the device. The Idol also offers an option to take a three-finger screenshot, which is nice, but we found we took a lot of accidental screenshots. One second we're holding the phone, then we look at the screen only to find that we had taken a screenshot. We turned that option off pretty quickly. In terms of battery life, the 2850 milliamp hour battery will get you through a day of light to medium gaming and some streaming. We found an average screen time of around three hours. We often hit the sack at the end of the night with around 15% or so to spare, so it doesn't provide you a huge margin for error, but there is some wiggle room. If you need a little extra juice, Pump Express will get you an extra 30 to 35% battery charge in 30 minutes, or 70% after an hour. In terms of performance, the phone works well under most conditions. There isn't a lot of performance lag when launching new apps or playing a few rounds of Sparkle. We did notice that more intense apps like VR could cause the phone to stutter here and there. This most commonly manifested itself in a jump in the center of the VR interface. 
Speaking of the VR interface, the Alcatel Idol 5 is designed to work with its Uni360 VR headset. Preloaded VR apps are ready to go with the Idol 5. The headset is sold separately for $50 and it's fairly comfortable to wear as far as VR headsets go. The interface is well laid out and easy to use. The screen on the Alcatel isn't ideal for VR though, so it can lead to some discomfort when playing in the world of VR. The headset is compatible with any 5 to 6 inch smartphone, so maybe a higher res phone will help in that regard. The camera on the Idol 5 is surprisingly decent. With the qualifier that it's a mid-range phone, the camera performs pretty well. There's really great color reproduction of the pretty fall colors surrounding us. We did run into a bit of a lens flare issue that we haven't seen on other phone cameras, but that seems to have been a one-time occurrence. We haven't been able to reproduce it since. After the sun goes down, you'll lose a lot of crispness to the photos, but they're still on the usable side. Make no mistake, this is no DSLR, and decent is the best word to describe it. But compared to the gross night shots you'll get from other smartphones in this price range, the Idol 5 seems to handle darkness better than most. Overall, the Alcatel Idol 5 is a nice little phone. Retailing at $200 on Cricut, this phone is a decent phone that will get you by. But even at $200, the lack of fingerprint sensor is just not acceptable. Maybe if you've never had one, yeah, go for it. And if it sounds like we're harping on this point, well, we are, because it's ridiculous. And it's a shame, because beyond that, it's a nice little phone. If that's something you can get past, then good for you. We won't not recommend the phone because it doesn't have one, because other than that, it's a nice little phone. But in our world, that is an absolute deal breaker. Thanks for checking out our full review of the Alcatel Idol 5 exclusive to the Cricut Network. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the little bell icon so you can get new videos as they come out. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd with Board at Work, Dead Technology on Twitter, reminding you to always enjoy your entertainment.